Hello, Uggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question is an interesting one, and it kind of ties into the eclipse studies and so on. He says, uh, this is from Eric Misselt, W8ESM. He says, a ham friend and I were chatting this last weekend, and he had mentioned that both his satellite and HF reception went away just after the Tonga volcanic eruption. Is it possible that the eruption distorted the ionosphere such that it is such that it would no longer allow reliable propagation? And um, Eric, I would say to the answer to that is probably yes. The Tongan uh, volcano explosion was one of the largest in the recorded history of mankind. It was enormous. It was huge. Uh, there was a lot of electrical activity in terms of thunderstorms and everything, uh, cloud to cloud lightning, even though there wasn't much water involved. The uh, cloud was so large that it actually went up into the stratosphere, which normally does not experience any weather. One of the problems with this is that the stratosphere is a kind of a separate atmospheric layer that's normally pretty peaceful. And once in a while, a thundercloud will bump up into it and then come back down. But this threw up so much stuff up into the stratosphere that there can still be dust circulating up there. Now, the stratosphere is not the ionosphere, obviously. The ionosphere is much higher. But... The um, explosion took place around dusk, and so the F1 and F2 layers of the ionosphere were merging into the F layer right as this gigantic explosion took place underneath them. The explosion created a shockwave traveling at the speed of sound upward through the ionosphere. Uh, since the ionosphere is part of the uh, atmosphere, it would have caused the shock wave to go up even there. Now, the speed of sound varies a lot in the atmosphere, from sea level to higher levels and so on, uh, from anywhere from about 600 to uh, maybe 800 miles an hour. It's always in there somewhere. And that because the ionosphere is in the atmosphere, would have propagated part of that shock wave up, which would have disturbed things for a while at least. I would imagine that things in the ionosphere would have settled down a matter of several hours later, certainly by the next morning. But could a very large volcano um, cause the ionosphere to have problems? Yes, absolutely. And the Tongan is an example of where the shock wave went up so high so fast that it caused the ordinary recombination of the F1 and F2 layers into the F layer to be affected somewhat. Now, if this caused issues with losing propagation in expected directions, it may have opened propagation in other directions. This is why there's a ham uh, sci that's called ham SCI, ham citizen science experiment, science citizen experiment, something like that. Anyway, uh, it's a mechanism where hams through their propagation studies can help determine when there are disturbances in the ionosphere. One of the most recent examples of these was the recent eclipse of the sun. It was a, an annular eclipse, meaning the moon was so close to Earth that it didn't completely blot out the sun. It went right over where we are here, uh, pretty near. Uh, my, uh, my daughter has some photographs she sent me of what uh, the uh, what it looked like on the ground as the uh, e eclipse passed overhead. Each one of those little pinholes of light coming through the cloud created a nice little picture of the eclipse. So yes, large atmospheric events can affect what's going on in the ionosphere. 
I won't say it will do it enormously, but it's enough to disrupt it for a few hours. So there you have it. I hope that helps you, Eric, uh, with uh, what you were looking at. Um, all I can say is wait for the next gigantic uh, volcanic explosion and, and see what you find there. So there you have it. Uh, if you would like to help support this channel, you can go to um, www.decastler.com slash tip hyphen jar. There will be following this uh, sign off a uh, page that talks about how to get in touch with me and uh, also another page about how you can help support this channel and uh, also a list of our patrons. Uh, the amount that the patrons contribute now exceeds the ad revenue from Google. So that's cool. Until we next meet, 73.